I would like to apologize for missing last week. I was kind of out of state and was not anywhere near my lovely little laptop. But I'm here, and only one thing to do. It's Halloween. It's getting colder. It's getting closer to the time of Sam Hain. You know what it's time for. It's time for Hello and Welcome Back to Fandom Fridays, where we proceed to check out all the fanfics that are not popping on you. Why? Because boys and girls of every age, wouldn't you like to see something strange? It's time for some Halloween picks. And considering the fact that I have finished on what was undoubtedly one of my favorite cartoons of all time, Gravity Falls, it's time to reminisce and enjoy some sweet, old-fashioned Gravity Falls favorites. With today's subject, Scare Tactics by Animation Nut. Enjoy! Scare Tactics by Animation Nut. Chapter 1, only chapter. Idly running his fingers through his brown hair, making the strands stand on end, Dipper made his way down the hall into the kitchen, stomach gurgling in hunger. He cast a quick glance at the time displayed on the microwave, reached the handle for the refrigerator, he did open. Gah! Letting out a startled streak, Dipper stumbled back several steps before slamming into the edge of the table. Loud guttural roar immediately turned to rankous laughter. As Stan unfurled himself from the empty interior of the refrigerator, Removing the bloody green monster mask. <laughs> your face! He cackled, holy stark. It's almost as pricely as your girly scream! Heart thudding badly as chest, Dipper managed to recover enough to send a fierce glare at his great uncle. I do not have a girly scream! He protested. Right. Must have been the radio coming out that high pitch, quit Stan. How long were you in there? asked Dipper incredulously. It's ten in the morning! I don't know. Maybe an hour. Stan arched his back and stretched his arms over his head, trying to work out the kinks. I no longer have been stuck in that position for days. So, I was your target, and you were just waiting for anyone to open the fridge? Eh, I wasn't scared the daylights out of anyone. I was open for you. Dipper made a face. Whisk granted. You know, summer waiting isn't for another three days, right? Yep. Not much time left to do some scaring. Clapping Dipper cheerfully on the back, Stan strode out of the kitchen. Mask in hand, whistling a foot a cheerful tune. The thirteen year old stared at a desolate state of the fridge, stomach whining in protest at the lack of waffles and syrup. Grunkle Stan! Where did you put the food? Summing aside the beige shower curtain, Mabel stepped into the cool porcelain tub. Humming her favorite several times song, she reached over and looked into the burner before cranking the silver tap. Thick, slimy, bright red liquid spewed from the nozzle, splattered against the bottom of the tub. Swirling crimson circles down the drain, and clung to her skin and gloves, eyes whining in fear. Maybe let out a scream and scrambled to the tub, nearly getting tangled in the current as she did so. She reached the grass for a large purple, fluffy towel and wrapped it around herself before stumbling out the door into the hallway, where she nearly collided with Thor. Mabel, Mabel, it's fine. It's just a little joke. Sue Thor, gently resting his hands on her shoulders to prevent her mad death. What? What the heck is it? She gasped, wanting to cleanse the towels around by. She raised her gently and run her fingers through her hair. They got caught in the odd substance that was matted to her long brown strands. Causing it a grimace. It's a little cacosso of mine. I never thought simple drink power would have that much of an effect. It's just cold water, after all. Not very shocking. Is my hair going to fall out? Asked Mila anxiously. As smart as her great uncle was, it took a few tries for any of his inventions and experiments to yield the required result. So he did not need a side effect of this junk to be hair loss. No, no, it's perfectly safe. It'll wash out. When he did this, he reached out to someone lightly. It's not funny! I hate being to differ! He said for a moment, I thought you were going to knock the door now. Jeez, I thought, well, I really didn't know what I was thinking, but I was freaked! Mabel stared down at the hardwood floor. Where a puddle of murky red stained water gathered. You clean this up. We'll see. Smirking, Thor tickled her chin before starting off for his bedroom. Huffing out of breath, Mabel shuffled back into the bathroom and checked the shower. The floor of the tub was covered in streaks of red, but the color, consistent as you are, had returned to normal. 
He's not going to clean this up. Dang it. The twins quickly learned that Ford loved Summerlee just as much as Stan did. Was a surprise. For one who loved the supernatural and weird as much as he did, would be delighted to live in a town that celebrated Halloween twice a year. Since Staple and Mabel were self-proclaimed pilot in royalty, they were happy to have two great uncles to share the holiday with. The only problem was that Stan and Ford took every opportunity to scare people, and that tended to be their niece and nephew, who were around pretty much 24-7. Dipper and Mabel tried to keep on their toes, but kept getting caught off guard by fake spires falling from the ceiling, holographic ghosts haunting their bedrooms at midnight, and someone jumping out of them every time they wanted their room. But two days left until summer wane, Dipper and Mabel were in the front yard of the mystery shack, raising several plastic tombstones right to the log graveyard. Mabel stuck a square shaped one to the dirt, let me slip from her brow. We now we have to get them back. Dipper glanced there. A few of the Halloween decorations took on Ezra's arm. Clearly, but how? They're going to be expecting it. Leaning against the hard material of the fake tombstone, Mabel pursed her lips in thought, finally straightening out her jack o' lantern swear. The work on it had to be super unpredictable. There's no way we could let Summerwing go by without scaring them back. They continued with a work of thoughtful silence. He's trying to fork out a way to get revenge on their great uncles without them foiling their plot. So when Dipper stuck his last tombstone on the ground, then an idea struck him. You know, he began, a slow smile curling across his lips. They're expecting us to pull off a prank. What if I came up with a plan and asked someone to pull off our dirty work? Trade, Mabel said. Maybe like clever. But who will you enlist to as our actor? His smile turned to a full out diabolical grin. Dipper replied, The absolute last person Grunkle Sam would ever expect us to ask. The mystery shack was transformed for Halloween. Its roof covered in silvery spider webs, the sprawling yard covered with tombstones. There were zombie hands with frightfully realistic rotting flesh, reeking a foul stench sticking out of the soil. A fog machine was reared up, thick gray smoke cutting the grass and hiding it from sight, so you had to stumble around to find your way. Lights were rigged up to the roof to the ports to flash at random intervals to stimulate lighting. Caustic teeth surrounded the building, guiding tourists towards the gift shop, where there were hidden mechanical vampires, werewolves, and terrifying clowns, Insisted to jump out of the shadows with high pitched screeches and roars. The gift shop was nearly unrecognizable. The black curtains hung from the ceiling, and the place was dark. Only a few dim bulbs offered some illumination. An eerie glow. There was an assortment of coffins and old contamination barrels, which may or may not have been sterilized by Stan, and were set about. They were along the curtains, turned the gift shop into a maze difficult to see which direction you were headed. One of these friends would be stationed in various positions throughout the store, dressed as zombies, ready and willing to frighten any soul that stumbled upon their path. One of the ensues and Melody were in individual, personal costumes, and they were going to be regular employees. Stan would be there on Summerween night to orchestrate the haunted shack. Though Ford planned plan to stay in the house for Summerween, he did not pass over the opportunity to scarify the shack. Among his technological contributions were his holographic cubes that display transparent ghosts and a sprinkler system that dread a green slime at different intervals. <laughs> I can't wait until the suckers start coming in, snickered Stan. He stared at the sack with pride. This will be a darn good Summerween. You don't suppose we've gone overboard, do you? Asked Ford, his hands on his tips and his eyes roaming over the Halloween decorations. Of course not! Gotta go out all these days. Kids are too sensitized. I was thinking more along the lines of seniors about conditions fluttering in here and having a life frightened out of them. He paused to grab his poor choice of words. You're a doctor, aren't you? I'm not that kind of doctor. I know basic first aid and CPR, but I didn't go to medical school. Hey, that's all we need. Besides, there are seniors who can't handle the fright that they shouldn't be stupid enough to come into a haunted house. The light suddenly zapped out, pushing the sack into darkness. For a brief moment, Stan quickly recovered Roll's eyes. Guess the runs of my eyes striking back. Don't you be more creative than this, mused Ford. Nothing wrong with the classics, if you know how to pull it off. The two men made their way into the house, squinting through the darkness. Kids! Called Stan. This right, but no cigar! They stepped forward into the living room to see Dipper by the television, fiddling with the buttons. 
Mabel slashed at the cast of pound on her lips. You were just getting on the good part, she whined. Hey, Grunkle Ford, I think there's something wrong with the television. Spoke Dipper, walking back on his heels with a frustrated huff of air. Just cut out on us. Very funny, said Dipper in before your amusement. You sort of play with the fuse box. Eyebrow arcing. Dipper exchanged a look of his sister. I wasn't playing with the fuse box. He said slowly. We were watching a movie. Game of the Halloween Spirit, said Mabel, looking up a case of a DVD. Slasher Attacker is our favorite horror movie. Did the power go out? Dipper asked. We were watching in the dark. Stan crossed the stars over his chest, eyeing the two suspiciously. You mean to tell me you didn't cut the power? Yep, been here the whole time, claimed Mabel. Uh huh. Not believing them, Stan made his way to the front door with Ward. Dipper and Mabel trailed behind him. He stepped out into the dark night, the shadows stretching around him. Ford stepped up to the fuse box and opened it, studying the contents. It looks fine, he said in confusion, flipping a few breakers, but no light returned to the sack. No reason why we shouldn't have power. All right, what did you do? demanded Stan, turning to stare at the two teens. We didn't do anything, protested Dipper. I don't even know what most of these doohickeys do, said Mabel. Huh. Puzzle Stan. Stan rubbed the back of his neck. This is a problem. We can't fix this by tomorrow. I'll bring my tools, declared Ford, closing the mailbox. There might be a loose wire. Bang! Gosh! The Ford jumped to surprise at the soaring noises that seemed to explode from the shack. Stan raced back inside while Ford hastily ushered Dipper and Mabel in front of him to keep them in sight. They stumbled into the pit's black house, tripping over edges of furniture. They made it to the living room and froze. Every single framed picture of the Pines family had been knocked off the wall, or now lying on the cape carpet, glass shards kind of fabric. On the wall, where the pictures once hung, was a chilling message written in dark red. I will have my revenge. He told me just get up, squeaked Mabel. Four took in the scene, heart pounding his chest. Did you two have anything to do with this? He asked sharply. No, I swear we didn't shut off the power, or write that, he said to Dipper. Stan? I did the racist, says brother grimly. He closed the forward and whispered so the kids could not hear. You don't think he's back? Coldness seemed to the forward's veins at the very idea. It's impossible. He can't! Stan tried to think of a possible explanation for what was occurring. Maybe it's Wendy and her friends trying to be funny, he muttered. He stood in the pocket of his suit pants and removed his cell phone. He could alert to his surroundings as he dialed and waited for the appointee to answer. Yo, Mr. Bynes, you're not calling me in for a light shift, are you? No, I'm calling to see if you and your punk, punk friends are <laughs> trying to pull a summary gag on us. Some weird things have been going Hold on. No, it's not us. We got busted for TP in the high school. And my dad's going to kill me if I get into more trouble. So, you've been near the second in the last couple of hours? Now, since my shift ended. All right, thanks. When Stan hung up, Dipper asked, Was it Wendy? No, replied Stan intensely. I think there's a way outside to appear to soak out. Bring out! Mabel suddenly shouted. They all find themselves towards the floor, careful of the glass as pots and pans, butter knives and spoons flung out the kitchen. Clattering against the walls, furniture and hardwood. I will have my revenge! An echoing, distorted voice thundered. So loud, the building seemed to sink at its foundation. I will have my revenge. Run! Boone Ford. Ford charged through the shack. Dipper and Mabel running ahead of the great uncles. They made it outside first. The stand and Ford burst out the front door and into the porch. Most of us hiding and juggling and racing. Figure suddenly took down a scream. Revenge! Sighing, Stan and Ford launched back guards and tripped over a falling railing. Landing in a heap on the grass. Dipper and Mabel finally dropped their facade, broke into laughter, clutching at their stomachs. <laughs> Your faces! Howled Mabel, clinging to her brother for support. Oh man, I'm so worried we wouldn't be able to keep it together. Revenge, revenge! Imitated Dipper, tears of rough running down his cheeks. Stan Ford slowly collected themselves, hanging to his feet and brushing the dirt from their clothes. Stan squinted to the darkness of the night, a jaw dropped to the figure, and frightened him. Get again! I'll lay a little money! The southern boy confirmed with a cackle. Hey, <laughs> 
but you'll get my license. I shall raise the gate. Stands there dumbly for a moment. Pieces fall into place. Scout fiercely rolled on his heel to face his hysterical niece and dip. nephew. You! He growled. You said you had nothing to do with it. No, we said we didn't do it. Corrected Dipper with a wide smile. And we didn't. We didn't do any of stuff. We just planned it. Gideon said the one who pulled everything off. I I was nothing, said Gideon smugly. Just a quick time. A fellow called the electric company and cleared him. And while, while I was a like, hands around saying I'll see some. You know, folks, I've been doing this show for the longest time, and this is the first time I've ever actually had a chance to do a little southern voice as a man. Most of the time, it's usually girl girls. The only time I ever get to do a deep southern voice is with Big Mac. It's sing. Let's see. Four clusters chest. Feeling his heart thump badly against his pawn. Where did your uncle say all this? He asked incredulously. Yesterday, said me a little trying to smile. We knew you wouldn't fall for any of this if we were missing, so we needed a third party. We chose Gideon because he's the last person Stan would expect to help us. At a different most mark, since you two aren't towards his throats anymore, we didn't automatically think of him as a suspect. Oh, I don't think it's struggling right now. Well, Stan, we thought that this was a possibility that this was Bill's doing. His Ford. That honestly wasn't our intention, said Dipper sheepishly. Sorry about that, but not the other stuff. Thanks for helping, Gideon, said Mabel tearfully, slapping the white bond on his shoulder. It was an opportunity I couldn't pass up, replied Gideon with a smug smile. Mr. Stanley is always a good time. See y'all later. He gave Stan a mocking finger wave before doing a more sincere one to Dipper and Mabel. He sauntered off, whistling a cheerful tune. Dipper and Mabel high-fived and grinned at their pale gray uncles. He sent and mess with the kings of Halloween, informed Mabel. Come on, that was pretty good. When I'm not so angry, I'll be impressed with what you pulled tonight, said Stan calmly. You better believe I'm going to get back to you next year. Right now, you better run fast enough so I don't get my hands on you. Ah, uh, Ford agreed ominously, spitting out his wet swear. I believe a dip in the pond will cool your egos. Uh, see you later, said Mabel quickly. She and Dipper raced off, Grey Uncle's house on heels. They sprinted down the dirt war towards downtown, trying hard to keep their logic a team ahead of their pursuing relatives. No regrets, hollered Mabel. Best summer we ever. Well, that was a wonderful fanfic to start my Halloween off. Sweet, cute, fun, enjoyable, true to the spirit of the show. Love the character, everybody's a character. <sighs> I love my work some days. I brought back fond memories of Gravity Falls. Even though I only ended the show back in August. Hey. When a great series ends. And you miss it. You're going to need fanfics.